Hi there, this is Jacob Nash, and I'm and we're going to be looking at some difficult ACT questions. Here's something about the ACT that you might not know, is that it's actually, even though it seems hard, it's actually not. The reason why it's, that's just what they want you to think, it's actually not hard. Um, it, it can be with the time, but the questions themselves are never ever really that complicated the ones that may seem it can seem hard for you um the, on, the only exception to that is if um maybe you didn't learn something like for example if you if you don't know about um maybe al algebraic equations or something then those questions are going to be hard for you for that reason but Odds are you've probably taken all the classes you need to, and if you if you paid attention in them, then the questions really aren't that hard. But let's just look at some of the harder ones, because there are some that are a little bit tricky. But it's really just the way they're worded. Um, okay, so here's we're going to look at some English ones first. So the things that I like to do, the, the English test is honestly the easiest. Um... You just need to see if it sounds right. Don't overuse commas, so you don't really need to put a comma before because, necessarily. Just mostly put them um, if there's some kind of break in the sentence flow or before a conjunction. Words like and, but, so, whatever. Um, and less is better. So if there's different choices that say the same thing, then... You want the one with less. That, and that is something that you can use on almost every single question, and it will make you get it right. And trust me, I know that from personal experience. I started out like a 24, and by following these rules, I got up to uh, nearly a 36. Um, so let's see. What, we, what can we do here? Um, all right. So, you might think, oh, uh, this is only a part of the reading. Well, the thing about these questions, you might think you have to read the thing first and then answer the questions, but that's not true. You just need to read the part that's around what has numbers. See how this is number six? That means, you really, this is the only thing that matters for that question. And th it does. there's no number here, but that's what this is. So, but let's read this whole thing because you want to read have some context because that can help all right the woman began to pet the iguana under its chin and the little dragon arched its neck and closed its eyes the reptile's calmness amazed me ed as did the caress that was given tenderly from the woman to her pet and watched it peacefully rest and we don't really need that part that doesn't have to do with it but something seems a little bit strange here what if you didn't know what caress meant and it just kind of sounds weird. Well, here's how we can figure out what's right and what's not. Well, we ha we can know that it's not F because tenderly, that doesn't really make sense in, in this given tenderly. That's, that's not necessarily proper English. We would say tenderness, not giving ten tenderness. But we know it's going to have to be tenderness. Um woman caressing her pet tenderly it's the same thing for that we don't want h all right well let's see is it is it g or j well we see uh tender it admit it, it the reptile's calmness amazed me as did the tenderness that the woman showed and watched it peacefully rest it well we're not sure what it is referring to you might you know probably that it's talking about the reptile but proper english we have to follow our proper english rules we can't just say it as because it could be talking about something else so we have to have something that says her pet so that's why g is the answer so that one is a little bit trickier that's probably one of the hardest you'll ever see all right, let's look at this. This is another hard one. And re and that's why I have these on here, because they're harder. Um, but once you've seen it, then the next time you can get it right. 
All right, uh, directors adored him. To recreate the audible ruckus of Caesar, Caesar's army for the movie, Spartacus, and it doesn't really matter if we n don't know how to say it, uh, Foley jangled a set of keys in front of the microphone. That simple act, a uh, Jack Foley classic, cut the movie's budget by untold thousands of dollars. So really, this is all we're looking at, this sentence. Um, so it's basically saying... Because of he used keys for uh, as a sound for army, that made the movie less money instead of them having to send an actual army. Well, untold thousands of dollars. Hmm. Well, we got to think about this. So sometimes s certain things seem uh, like they could work. But they can't for a certain reason that may not make sense. And that's what I have to say about this. Because um, I um, s sometimes they're just a little bit tricky. And you just kind of have to think a little bit hard. Well, they cut the movie's budget by untold thousands of dollars. That seems like that could be possible. So let's not eliminate that. Unspeakable thousands of dollars. That doesn't really make sense. Unspeakable is a word. But that's... That means not able to be spoken about. So that doesn't really make sense. Speechless. That definitely doesn't make sense. That um, Endless thousands of dollars. Well, here's the thing. This is a... J might seem like it's right. But here's the reason why it's not. That That's what's a little bit tricky. Because this... In my opinion, this doesn't really have to do with grammar at all. That's completely grammatically correct. And it makes sense. Endless thousands of dollars. That's... Uh, uh, correct English phrase. But we can't say that because in this context, is it was it really endless? And, I, and that's why I don't really like this question because sometimes people do use exaggerations in their talking. So it, that technically I, I would feel that Jay is correct, but there's always some kind of thing like that with the ACT. Really, if there's any possible doubt, then you just don't choose that. Untold is also correct English, but that kind of makes more sense in this situation. So you have to think of what's more right. And that might seem annoying, but that is really just how it is sometimes. All right, let's look at this one now. The director had planned to ship actors and horses and armies worth headed to battlefield, a battlefield overseas to get an authentic sound recording. We don't need that. Okay, so we're just looking at this. All right, well, we got to see the differences. All right. An army's worth. Hmm. Well, this seems like an omitted phrase. And if you don't know what that is, an omitted phrase is something where it's just in between commas and there's some kind of descriptive thing, but it, it doesn't matter if it's there. You could just not have it, and the sentence would still make sense. There's a lot of questions like that on the ACT, but what makes this one hard is not that. It's that it just is kind of worded weird. An army's worth headed to the battlefields. So that kind of sounds like that is correct English. An army's worth headed to battlefield overseas. But that doesn't really make sense in this context because we're talking about how, mu how many actors and horses they were shipping and we're not actually talking about an army going it's it's saying an army's worth like that much so so in that case we would actually the answer would be c because headed to that doesn't make sense and an army's worth a battlefield we definitely know it's not d that does that's not even correct english so that's what's a little bit weird about this one because a um, and B are both, it's just like the last question. They're both grammatically correct, but it doesn't really make sense in this context because we're talking, this is kind of like a hyperbole sort of, or a metaphor. Um, it's just telling you how much of actors and horses there were. And another thing that was a little bit tricky, this is in context of the full passage, it was already talking about armies, an army, but this time we're not talking about a literal army. 
so it's a little bit weird. All right, let's see about this one now. Over standard maps. Hmm. I think something might have been... Um, oh, we, we don't need that, that sentence. Okay. All right. These maps clearly depicted the few subway lines that extended into suburban London, but they compressed and obscured the impact of heavily, heavily routed, heavily trafficked routes. So this one's not asking for the correct grammar. This one's asking for the most correct answer. It's saying, what is the clearest? It's always good to underline. Clearest and uh, suggests the highest degree of failure. Okay, well, obscured. Hmm, that seems like that could be right. In general, we're disappointing. Uh, that doesn't really sound like that was that much of a failure. Made indecipherable. Hmm. Didn't fully capture. We know it's not that. So here's something. This is another one where it's almost like a matter of opinion. Obscured. In this case, the answer is H because obscured definitely um, is clear, but it doesn't really show as much failure as indecipherable. That's the reason why it's not F. But this does, this is a close answer. It's technically correct, but H is more correct. So that's the thing about that. All right, switching gears. Now we're on math. Oh, let's see. Um, here's my tips for math. Underline any information. I already said that's really useful to do on any test. If you have a lot of numbers, you might need to use the algebraic equation. Sometimes if you're like, I don't even know what to do with these. They're telling you, sometimes you have questions where it's like, these two people left at different times and they're driving different speeds. And like, it's like, ah, like it seems so complicated. But that's when I'm, that's what I already said. It's really not. All you have to do is just kind of think about it. And you might be able to make an algebraic equation. Another thing, use that calculator. You don't need to try to solve it in your head. No one's going to judge you if you have to type 6 divided by 3 in the calculator. If it can get you your answer quicker, then that's what you need to do. All right. So Esteban and his family are making care packages to send children at summer camp. Each package has five pens. It has two notebooks. And it has three envelopes. Notice how I underlined that. It has 12 cookies and five candy bars. Mmm. See, that's what make, might make people stressed out already because you have so many things. But it's not a hard question. We'll see. All right, Esteban and his family have already made seven complete pa uh, packages. And th these are the things that remain. Three boxes of pens, and there's ten pens per box. That's what I'm talking about. The ACT is trying to do something stupid. They could easily say 30 pens, but they have to say that to confuse people. Th three boxes of ten pens... Well, that means we have 30 pens. Uh, and then, really, we can just skip down. We just multiply all these numbers. 20, 24, 84. Luckily, we didn't have to do anything for that one. Oh, and 4.5 and times 10, this is what I'm talking about. If you can't think of that right away, type that into the calculator. 45. Um, all right. And it, it's saying how many additional complete packages could they make. So, essentially, this 7 is does not matter one bit. We're saying, this is the remaining things. We're trying to figure out how much could we make. Well, all these things that told us that I underlined right here, we just divide these by to figure out how much you could make of these. So 5, 2, 3, 12, 5. You divide these out. 6, 10, 8, 7, 9. Now, it might get a little bit confusing. Look at our answer choices. Oh, well, at least we know it couldn't be 15, but what we have to do is the least one. And I forget the professional term for this, but whenever you have something like some kind of material, so just imagine you have, let's just say, two squares and three circles, and you, and, uh, uh, let me see, how, how can I explain this? Let's say you have, um, uh, I don't know, maybe that's not a good way to explain it, but you, if you um, made, you can only make six with this. So it doesn't matter that you can make ten with this, because you, you wouldn't have any left of this, and you need all of them to make a full thing. 
a whole a full package. That's what I'm trying to say. You so it's always when there's something like this, it's always the least one because you couldn't make any more, you couldn't make any more packages after six. You after you made six pack care packages, you would still have materials from that, but it doesn't matter because you don't have any more of that. So that's what I'm trying to say. So it's really not that complicated. Um Hmm. Okay, well, let's look at this next question. Okay, so a fabric store sells flannel and calico fabrics. Joan pays $25 for three yards of flannel and four yards of calico. So with $25, she got that. And that so we can just abbreviate well now we have to see um, what is the price for one yard of calico oh sorry I skipped something uh, Chris pays $11 for one yard of flannel and two yards of calico so we would write this all right so now th that's why this question is hard you might, you might just, how do you figure that out? You might think that, like, what? Well, like I said, whenever you have something like that, really what you can do is make an algebraic equation. So 25 and 11 are our total, so we're making two equations. So 25 equals 3, we'll just say F for flannel and C for calico. And then we can just do F plus 2C. All right. Okay. So now what we need to do, we're trying to solve for C. This is there's the, this is the kind of thing that you might have learned in algebra one. You have to do something to cancel something else out. So we don't care about the F's. We need to cancel them out because we're going to combine these equations. So we have to multiply the full equation. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side in every term. So we are multiplying this by negative 3 because once we do that, this will be negative 3f, and that will cancel those out. That's why we're doing that. So now we will have this changes to negative 33, negative 3f plus, or sorry, minus 6c. And then we still have this equation that we already had. We didn't do anything to. Okay, so now we're like, bye-bye. I don't care about that. That's what you always have to do when there's two variables. So now we combine these. This would become 8, 25 minus, or 25 minus, um, oh, wait, hang on a second. Oh, wait, sorry, that negative 8, negative 8. Um, and then this would be negative 2c. You solve for that, c is 4. So that wasn't that hard, really. Um, but all you, that's what you have to think about. You might have to make an equation, and it's really a lot of the questions are similar. That's why more practice helps. All right, this one. Jamie claims if a triangle is in set A then it is not isosceles. So there's dumb questions like this where it just seems like, what? what is set A? Well, it doesn't matter. They're just saying random things to try to confuse you. So we have to think set A, not isosceles. Not I. All right? Jamie discovers that triangle M and P is a counterexample. Counterexample means that it's like, that was dumb, so this isn't. That means that it's not true. So we just said set A has no isosceles, but if this is a counterexample, then it has to be isosceles. So we know it's isosceles. Um, proving that this claim is false. What must be true about M and P? Well, it if it's a counterexample, then it definitely is in set A, and it has to be isosceles because if it proves it to be wrong, then it's it changes what it said. It said there couldn't be an isos isosceles, but if it's a counterexample, that means that had to have been one. 
So that that's what I'm talking about. That's not even a hard question, but it just has things like that to confuse you. There's lots of science ones like that, uh, like that too. So, all right, let's look at this now. Hmm. Oh, this is one of the ones where you use something for more than one question, but that doesn't matter anyways because we're not doing that. Okay, so this parallelogram is graphed. Sides A, B, and C, D are um, square root of negative or square root of ten long, and the other ones are five. The distance between A, D, and B, C is three. So that means that this part is three, and this part is three. All right, what is the area? of a b c d well this is something that seems a little bit strange so how do you even find an area of a parallelogram well we will have to, what we have to do is there's three parts to this there's that oh, sorry there's that the thing like that there's the thing like that and there's the thing like that for this one, we have to use one half times base times height. This one is just base times height, and then this is also that. But we know these are going to be the same, anyways. So one half times base times height. Well, this is what I'm talking about. There's, it's a little bit tricky. Well, if the full thing is five, then this thing is not five. And, but. It's, it's going to be negative 1, because if you see, it's on the coordinate. And then the height is 3, so we don't even have to use the negative 10. So it's a little bit confusing. You might be tempted to say, like, 5 or 3 or something, but you it's you don't even use that. So that that's going to be the same thing for right here, too. All right, but right here, this middle part is going to be 4 times 3, because... Um, it's not, this is just four right here. It is not f the full five because it doesn't include that part. So we're going to add those things together. And we type that into the calculator. One half times negative one times three. Plus four times three. Plus one half times negative one times three. That is 9, okay. So obviously I did a calculation error, sorry about that. Okay, hang on. I got to see what this is. I have my work on paper, I got to see. Um... Oh, okay, I know what it is. So, we actually... Um, so, we know that the, this is the parallelogram. This is the base. This is the height. Or, this is the distance between the two lines. So, really, three is this distance. So, yeah, actually, we multiply 3 times 5, or 5 times 3, and we get 15. That's actually, it was a, simpler than I uh, was making it. Um, so this was, a, um, e when you're finding the area of a parallelogram, um, When you're finding the area of a parallelogram, you simply just do the base times the height. Um, so I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, the but the, you have to make sure that you know that the height is not um, that. It's this. So sorry about that. I just completely 
forgot that somehow, but whatever. Sorry. That was not even a hard question anyways. So, Okay, let's look at this one. Hmm, well, after constructing the table, it was discovered... So there is a back story with this, because this is one of the ones where you use it for three questions. So the, what it is, is it, I, I think... Let me find it. Um, people were voting on if, if they were glad that a library was gone or something. Or no, the, ch the, change it, the changes in an hour... It was just voting on that. They Did they like it? Did they not like it? Or did they not care? And it's high school students, college students, non-students. So it was discovered that 15 residents who replied that they approved incorrectly classified as non-students. So there's not even as many non-students as we thought. So 85 plus 353 plus 47, that's 485 minus 15. So now we find out that there's actually only 470 of those. After correcting the errors, 60% of the college students replied that they approved. Now we're trying to find the percent of the high school, percent of the high school students that approved. Well, th that might seem crazy. Well, it, here's what we have to do. It's another uh, algebraic equation, once again. What do you know? So, we first have to figure out, we know that 60% of the college students replied that they approved. Okay, well, we at least need to know how many were the ones that um, approved. And then we can figure out how many of the 15 were high school and how many of the 15 were college. So we know there are, before the error was corrected, we knew there was 14 that approved. But we now know that there's going to have to be something added to that because some of, the, some of the 15 are the college students. On the other side, we know that 60% of the total students agreed or approved. So that's, we're changing that to decimal. We know we're adding something to it. We have to add these together. 14 plus 10 plus 6 is 30. So now we have to solve for x. So 0 0.6 times 30, 18 plus x. All right. So now uh, we can get, oh, wait, uh, <laughs> sorry. Forgot to distribute to the other x. Um, so now we get the x's on the same side. So equals 18. Then 0 0.4x equals 4. x, in fact, equals 10. Oh! Sorry, drops. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that we just figured out that 10 of the ones that were incorrect were college students. So that means that there are five high school ones that were wrong and that actually improved. So there was five more than they thought. So now we see the high school here that's so that means that t actually there were 35 high school students that approved. Well, that's not the answer because we have to figure out the percent of the high school students that approved. So the percent is part over whole. The part is 35. The whole would be 35 plus 4 plus 11. And when we figure that out, it's about 0 0.7, so that really means... 70%. So there you go. That one, it actually was kind of long, but it wasn't really that hard. Hmm, here's a kind of tricky one. The greatest common factor of two whole numbers is 10. The least common multiple is 120. What are those numbers? Oh, come on. 
if you're like me, I didn't even learn this in school, so we'll have to see. So, greatest common factor, least common multiple. Well, with the greatest common factor, we have to multiply, to find it, we multiply the same, all of the same numbers that go into other numbers. So, we can just choose any of these random choices, and we're going to, and if, that's how we have to solve this one, that's why it might take a long time. That's why it's got good to do the easy ones as quick as you can, because there's ones like this to take longer, because there's not really a quick way to do this. We just have to do trial and error. If we figure out it doesn't work, then it doesn't. So, let's assume that I tried all of them, I'm not going to waste the time, but let's just say I got to E. E's the last one. I mean, obviously, if the other ones were not correct, then I would know E is correct, and I wouldn't even have to do it. So let's just pretend that E was, like, one of the first ones that I tried. So we look at 30 and 40. We have to break these apart completely. Um, okay, well, we have 30 divided by 6 is 5. So 6 times 5, well, that's not good enough because... 6 can break into part in 2 and 3, so now we have 2, 3, 5. 2 times 3 times 5. Alright, 40, let's divide that by 10. So now we have 10 and 4. Well, that's not good enough because 10 can break apart into something. And 4. 4 can be 2 and 2. So let's just do 2, 2, 10 right now. 2, 2, 10. And then 10 can be 2 and 5. Okay. So now they're completely broken apart. All these numbers are prime. They cannot be divided anymore. So we have to multiply all the things that are the same. The 3 is not in both, and we only have to multiply the th if there's duplicates once. There's 2s in both. There's 5s in both. We don't have to do more than 1, 2, just 1, 2. So 2 times 5, that means that the greatest con factor is 10 of these numbers. So so far, so good. Because remember, that's what it was. Well, least common multiple... multiple you have to multiply all. We are doing the same thing, but we have to multiply them all. And you, the the thing is, is that you, um, you don't multiply. It's except the ones that are same the same for different numbers so here's what i mean by that we don't even have to break apart the numbers again because we already did right here so notice how there's a five and a five here those are the same numbers for diff different numbers so there's no, i don't know how else to say that but if you notice they're both fives but one is for the 30, one is for the 40. So that means we're not multiplying both fives. But what we are going to multiply are all these twos because they're on the same number. So we multiply the 2 from the th 30 times the 3 from the 30 times the 5 from the 30. Now we're going to multiply, multiply only two of these twos. Add, we're only going to add two of these twos. The reason why is because we don't, we cross out the ones that are the same and we only have to add one of them. We already added the 30 to. So I know this might seem a little bit confusing, but once you understand it, then it makes more sense. Um, so that's why we're not using this two. But we are using the other two. And why are we using both here? Because it's they're both for the 30. And then we're not using that 5 because we already did this 5. So, or sorry, we're not. I don't know, I just did it anyways. Okay, so then when you multiply those, that's 120. So that's how we know that this is the answer. So I know this one, honestly, was a little bit hard. If you don't know what these things mean, because we're kind of working backwards. But that's what you got to remember. For the grace con factor, you multiply the ones... They're the same. We, that's why we didn't add a 3 in. It wasn't the same. It wasn't 
on both things. But for the least common multiple, you have to multiply everything except for if there's the same for both numbers. So there you go. All right, now we're looking at this one. In the standard xy coordinate plane, circle is centered at 1, 3. Okay, so whenever you have something like that, you might just want to draw that out. So 1, 3. So that's the center of it. Um, and it passes, that passes through 4, 7, so... This is obviously not the scale, 6, 7. So it passes through right there. Hmm, the set of the all points are what? Huh, that seems a little bit weird. Well, five coordinates from one, three. So all the points, so that really just means the radius. Or if this was, if four, seven was the um, end. Uh, so... If we go down here, equidistant, that what that means is it is what it sounds like. It's equal distance. So that's saying that it's equal distance from one, three, and four, seven. Well, it's not these because um, the the e says equidistant from the line segment with endpoints. Well, how would that how would that make sense? It, e equal from both of those that that just doesn't make sense. So, we're going to actually use the distance formula to actually figure out the distance. So, the distance formula is unfortunately one of those things you have to memorize like law of cosines and Pythagorean theorem. But this is what it is. It's not that hard to remember, really. Everything, you just have to think, things are kind of like backwards. X2, X1, Y2, Y1. So we plug in those points. This is... Um, this is X1, Y1. X2, Y2. So we just plug that into the calculator... And you figure out that it is 5. The distance is 5. So it's 5 coordinates away from 1, 3. So if that that's a little bit of a tricky question in my opinion because it's saying the circle is centered at 1, 3. Um, and it passes through 4, 7 is the set of all points that are. And so it's just a, a little bit worded, wor worded, strangely. So whenever you see two points like that, you might need, you might think of using the distance formula. So that would at least help you rule out D and E if you didn't even know what it was talking about. Um, and five coordinates from both those, that just doesn't, that doesn't make sense. So. It's a little bit, that was, that's, a, that's a hard one there. Okay, this one. This one, you thought that was hard. Get ready for this. This is probably, I think this, is the, this isn't the last math one that I'm going to show you, but it is probably the hardest one if you thought that last one was hard. All right, let's see. The, cl the club, art club design banners for the schools with two colors, blue and white. Each banner required... One fourth yard of blue and three eighths yard of white. So that means one fourth blue plus three eighths yard of white. That equals one banner. They originally purchased enough material to make five hundred, but they figured out that it was cheaper if you uh, purchased it in full of bolts. So that might throw you off. Bolts? What? That sounds dumb. Well, it is dumb. But basically, a blue bolt has 10 yards, and a white bolt has 12 yards. So that's what we need to know. 
Now we're try trying to figure out how many extra banners was the club able to make if they purchased enough bolts to make at least 500 banners. So this just seems weird, and it is. First, we need to figure out... Um, in the first place, before we get to the bolts, how many yards of blue and white would they need to make or have to make 500? So what what we do is we take 500 and we're going to have to multiply it by one fourth and multiply it by three eighths. Sorry. Uh, and that's what... That will tell us that. So 125 and then 187. So that's telling us, I'll just say yards blue, yards white. So that's how much we need to make 500, okay? Well, now we, what we need to do is divide these numbers by the 10 and 12 yard bolts and it, you'll see why in a second so um we need to do 125 divided by 10 because those are both the blue things so that gives us 12.5 all right now 187.5 divided by 12 that's the white things and let's see what does that give us that gives us 15.6 okay so what do these numbers mean it's telling us that that's how many bolts uh they would need so remember because they decided they're going to buy bolts but you if you go to the store can you buy a part of the thing, they're like, oh, let's just chop off half of that. We only want 12.5. Can't do that. So they would end up having to buy 13. They would end up having to buy 16. So that's the point of this. We're trying to figure out, this question is saying they know, they realize it's cheaper to buy that, but that would end, uh, end up making them have make more banners than they needed. So what we end up doing is, remember, this is how many yards come on these bolts. So we multiply these, that would make, that would give them 130 yards, and this would give them 192. Okay, now what do we do? Because, of course, we're not done, are we? Well, now we have to divide this by one-fourth, and this by three-eighths. Well, let's think why. So if this is, it, unit is yards, this unit is yards, well, that, what would that bring us back to? That would bring us back to um, the amount of banners. So it's kind of like converting th to units. This gives us 520. This gives us 512. <coughs> well, this is similar to the last thing, or the, the first question we did. Remember with the gift, ba or gift bags or whatever it was, you have to choose the thing that's the least. So that's tricky because 20 is there. Remember 500. So... 512 minus 500 is five or is 12. So that's why they put that 20 in there. They try to mess you up, but you always have to choose the thing that's the least in something like this because if they were able to make 512 banners, they could make 520. Uh, but think about it. Once they get past 512, then there's no more of that. So that is hard. There's lots of steps to that, and it's hard to just think of off the top of your head. But you have to think about... Algebraic equations, converting to units, and things like that. It's That helps. Um, okay, now, this is the last math question. Uh, it's, oh, it's a matrix thing. These, you might not learn about it. I didn't learn about this in school ever. I just had to learn about it when I started preparing for the ACT. So it's saying, here's a random table of letters. And if you don't know what this is, this seems like gibberish. Well, now that's why you're learning it. For distinct values of K, M, and N, which matrix products are not possible? Well, what is a, a, a matrix uh, product? That's 
what it sounds like. Product is when you multiply things. So we just multiply these letters. So let's see, ED, that's NM times MK. DC, okay, that's MK times KN. CE, KN times NM. AE, MN times NM. AC, MN times KN. Oh, that just seems so annoying, doesn't it? Well, even if you didn't know anything about this, a good tip for an ACT is to find something that's different between these. So what seems different? Well, they all have Ks, they all have Ms, they all have Ns. But if you look in the middles, MM, KK, NN, NN, NK, that's different. That's actually the answer because a rule about the matrices, when you multiply them, or matrices, whatever, when you multiply them, the middle thing has to be the same. The middle thing's not the same. That's why the answer is AC. So that's just kind of dumb. But what do you know? That's what that is. So remember that. All right. Done with math. All right. Let's switch over to English. The English... Here's the thing about the English section and the science section. Really, if you think about it, if none of the sections were timed, the hardest one would probably be the math section, in my opinion. Because, just simply because... That's the one where there can actually be things you don't know, like you never learned. The other ones are really just paying attention um, to, to details. So the tips that I have for both the English and the science sections are actually the same. These ones, the worst, your worst enemy for these tests is time. So what you need to do is skim... And only underline details and names. This might seem weird. This m because you might think, oh my gosh, if I can't understand the passage, then the questions aren't going to make sense. Well, the thing about these, you kind of get on a roll. So the first questions that you might answer for a passage, for both science or English, they might take you a little bit longer because you're like, I don't even really understand what it's talking about. Well, that's the reason why you, you underline names or details, because that's what... I've, from experience, I know that's what they ask about. They ask about names, and that so much in the passage is never talked about. So that's the point. These questions, these tests have no time, but you'll have way more time if you don't fully read it. And here's the thing. If, you, if a question asks about something you didn't read, then that's when you read it, and then it will make sense. But don't waste your time reading something that you're never going to be asked on. So now we're going to read this, and obviously, um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to read. I just said I'm going to skim, so I'm going to just underline certain things. All right, let's let's see. Oh, and here you have some like this. Sometimes passage passage A, passage B. All right, you see her first in Memphis bus station. Okay, I'll just say I'll just underline that I saw Memphis. All right. Uh, you pretend you was she wasn't there. Okay, send wash jeans. I'm just looking. Catches you staring. Um, pops down in the seat next to you. Can't stop now. But she asks, "Where are you from?" All right. You're not a bad person. You just wish the greyhound assigned seating. It's not the straw blonde hair. See, key detail. Sad, neglected teeth. Hmm. All right. Uh, don't need anything else in that paragraph, All right? She tells you about man who's taking the bus to sea. Left for a construction job on in Palm Beach. My eyes are as blue as the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Can't trust her. Right. We're the same person. Reminds you of the Eiffel Tower. Radio Tower reminds you of the Eiffel Tower. Firefly porch lights. Woman resigns herself. Okay. Oh, what do you know? Done with that passage. I don't understand what that was talking about. Too bad. All right, next thing. Evening was falling with... And always these passages are somewhat similar. Similar. Can't talk today. I've talked so long in this video, I can't even talk. 
Uh, okay, Tokyo, bound train. Oh, and if you can see some things are already underlined, that's because I got this from practice test book, so I'm sorry if that's the case. But All right, departing from Yokosuka. Window frame. Heard someone coming. Clattering of dry weather, cl dry weather clogs. That seems like that could be asked about. Door. Second cats. Second class carriage. Flung open. Cursing of conductor. Uh, girl came in. All right. At that moment, I with shudder that it used to, it went forward. Lusterless hair. Constant rubbing of her nose and mouth. Cheeks were chapped and red. Grimy. Ugh, that, it seems like in both, if you notice, it's kind of rude. Or like, not rude, but like poor details about both people. It seems like in both cases, this is what you have to be thinking in your head. It seems like you have to think about what's similar, what's different between them. That's what it's going to ask about whenever you see passage A, passage B. I can tell it's... Two random people and they're interrupted by other people that seem annoying, basically is what's happening. Alright. Girl fervently opened the window. Alright, she opened the window. It was too heavy for her to open though. I hope that she would fail. Cold air. Okay. Then I saw three red cheek boys. Five or six mandarin oranges. So what? What is this talking about? See, that happens sometimes. Well, we're not going to look because we... What if that's not asked about? We'll look if it, we see a question about it. How about that? And now we have a placeholder if it does. All right. I, mean, I knew the meaning of it all. All right. Um, all right. Here's the, here's the rest of the passage. Um, uh, gratitude to see her off. Speakable fatigue. All right. Well, there you go. And there were a lot of questions for this, but we're only looking at one. So that I say that because there are some of the things I underlined there could have been questions about, but we're only looking at this. All right. Which of the following statements best describes you? How both you in passage A and the narrator in passage B react when seeing the block... Uh, the blonde woman and the young girl, respectively. So, just like we thought, there's a similarity between the blonde woman and young girl. Well, they they seem annoying to them both. So, you and Passage A, remember they were talking, you see her, you see her. Well, really, you and the narrator of Passage B are similar. They're the thing that gets interrupted. So, let's see. They consider the other character to be pitiful looking. Well, they both, remember that they said neglected teeth for the blonde woman. They said, uh, like, chapped cheeks for the other one. That's why we underlined those details. Now we can answer that. But let's look at the other things. They're angry because the other character has delayed their departure. Hmm, that seems possible. They're surprised by the other character's reason for traveling. No. Um, that kind of is the case for Passage B, but not really Passage A. They believe the other character is enviable because life seems so easy for her no they didn't ever think life was easy for them well if you notice that g is actually only true for passage b even though the one in a was interrupted it wasn't because of the blonde woman it was just because of the layover so it wasn't it wasn't her fault it was the girl's fault because remember the conductor had to stop the train to let her on so that's what I'm talking about. That question might have been... You you still could have answered it if you read the passage fully, or if you didn't. And so why would you do something that takes more time? So there you go. Oh, what do you know? Another passage. All right, let's read this thing. Humanities. Well, when it's humanities, humanities it's going to talk about some kind of 
proper thing that you maybe don't know about. All right, let's do the same thing. Traditional stories include myths. Oh. Myths, legends, folktales. People pass their religious beliefs. So it looks like it's talking about stories. Um, significant ways to the well-being of communities. Okay, acclaimed Laguna, Laguna Peb, Pueblo, Pueblo writer. So that's another thing. What I just did is not what you should do. If you say, if you kind of say something and you're like, I can't pronounce that, don't go back to it because you just kind of you have to go quick. Um, okay, so s proven strategy survival. So it's looking like. They're trying to say that uh, storytelling is was useful for survival. Contained information about importance of behavior, um, migration patterns of deer, landmarks, and locations of freshwater. So the story served as a map. Lost travelers could be saved. Okay. Similarly, children's book author just proved rather than mere myths, since the von truth, it has deep knowledge. Many Native American nations, okay, so it's basically saying there's Native Americans that use that storytelling, it's the meaning of passing along information. All right, so I can't. Once you kind of get a gist of what the thing's talking about, it's going to say the same thing. It's just going to have more evidence, more evidence. So how about we just uh, kind of just look. Um, it should remain true to the spirit of the original content. All right. We're, we're not really reading that much anymore because now we know what it's about. All right. As a Pueblo Indian woman, so we know that about the narrator. Maybe it will ask about that. Huh? It is it's folk tales. All right, now let's go back. Let's go up to this. Oh, kind of faded. Sorry about that. Um, our children who really read these folk tales learning anything useful about us. Indian woman from. Okay, so she is, no Nambe Pueblo, Nambe Pueblo. Sorry if I said that wrong. But, um, I was born, Santa Fe, raised on our reservation taught to dance so she's talking about the different traditions and stuff she had distinctions okay all right let's go down here i draw upon my cultural intuition when i read jokes i wondered about what the book is about there's 19 different pueblos so i i i guess she's saying what was this mcdermott talking about what was he talking about? Because there's a lot of different Pueblos, so which one was he talking about? Okay, keep it a serpent, keep it a beast. Don't know what that's talking about, but I'll look at it if there's a question about it. Fictions are culturally acceptable. Okay, we'll look back if we need to, but let's see. All right, we have two questions here. As she is presented in the passage, Silco, hmm, who's Silco? Well, let's keep reading. Uh, indicates that one purpose of the Laguna Pueblo hunting stories was, oh, Silco, um, mm, is Silco the author? It doesn't say, but we're going to assume that, okay? Okay, well, what, basically what the question is asking is purpose of the hunting stories. Well, it was to locate and rescue lost hunters. Hmm, I, th I remember it saying something about that. We'll look. Document the successful hunts. Nah, didn't talk about that. Behavior patterns of the game. I remember it, it did say something about the deer. We'll have to look at that. Find caches of food made by the gatherers. Mm, I don't think it said that. It, it did say something about fresh water, though. Okay, so... So we're trying to see, is it about the lost hunters, or is it about the deer? 
Well, we remember this paragraph is what it was. That's why we underline. Um, okay, critical information about the migration patterns. Well, that is, that's what it is. Lost travelers and pinyon nut uh, gatherers may have been saved by a sighting of rock formation they recognize only because they once heard a story about it. Um, well, it's not saying to locate the lost hunters. It's for the lost hunters to know where they are. So that's why that's not correct. So it's actually C. All right. The passage, um, the author most directly connects your knowledge and distinctions. Okay, we're going to underline it. Her experience is this. So basically this question is saying, how does she prove that she knows anything about it? She's a scholar in, in Native American studies. Uh, maybe. A friend of McDermott, no, she wasn't a friend. The editor of something, no. Elder in the Nambe Pueblo community. Well, you might be tempted to do this. Oh, well, did it say she was old? No. So, it's actually A, because it, she did say... Um, Let's try to find it. And the thing about the reading, they all, it always says it's somewhere. Um, look. My research. We know she's a scholar. She is in the Nambe Pueblo, but she's not old. So that's that question's trying to throw you off. She's not old. That would make her mad. Hey, I'm not old. So, there you go. Alright, now we're moving on to science. And... Here's a, uh, the truth about science tests. It's not even a science test. It's a reading test. I'm just telling you. It's just reading part two because there are some times when you need to know about the science. or you, I mean, you need to know science things, but usually it's just reading what they gave you. All right, so same thing. We're not going to try to understand what this stupid stuff is about. We're just underlining any names we see. Five PTs, okay. Uh, Newton meters, oh, okay. Average measurement D was calculated. Okay, that's so stupid. All right, let's continue. Here are the steps. All right, it was submerged for 30 seconds in water. PT was a control containing GLA. It was dried on a plate at 85 for four minutes. It was heated in the oven for three minutes temperature 25 and for all these temperatures okay don't really understand that but we'll we'll understand it if there's a question about it. the pt it's just like the reading there's not it, a lot of the stuff might not, who knows maybe none of this will be talked about we'll see the pt submerged in water for 10 minutes two hours or 24 hours or, that sounds dumb. All right, it doesn't matter. We have to keep going. The wet strength is measured in newton meters. The wet strengths of the PTs, they didn't even tell us what PT is, but whatever. Each average wet strength W was divided by D. So D must be some kind of constant, maybe? Uh, D was calculated. Oh. And then multiplied by 100. So that must mean it was some kind of percentage. The W divided by D values are shown in figure 1. Well, I didn't put that on here because the question that I added doesn't have to do with figure 1. But here's the question. We always underline step 1 of experiment 1. Sometimes key things like that you might miss and it would make you t take way longer to answer it. What become controls? I remember seeing something about controls. Submerged in what liquid? And in step three, in experiment one, what, these controls were heated in an oven at what temperature? So, step one, experiment one, what liquid, see it's a two-parter. Two now, step three, experiment one, what temp? And it's key. This is key. And this is key. Because if you mix it up, then you'll get it wrong. So let's look. So let's first look. What liquid? Step one. Water. 
you there's also GLA there, but it's saying what was it submerged in? It was submerged in water for thirty seconds or in a tele, in a testing solution containing GLA. It it was saying submerged in what liquid? It said submerged, so it's water. Oh, we don't know which one it is. All right, what temperature? All right, step three. Oh, 25. So it is A. So this one is kind of tricky. That's why I added it, because you saw GLA right there, but it said submerged in water, and it I don't know. You just have to do what's close to it. So that's just what you have to do. All right. Oh, this is all another question about the same thing. Oh, wait. Yeah, it is. Oh, well, here's the, here's the figures that have to do with it. And here's the, another thing. So we are underlining things f for this, but we don't, we don't give a crap about those graphs until they ask about it, okay? Don't look at the graphs and try to figure out what they mean, what they mean until you have a question about it. All right. One student predicted that the wet drinks of the PTs would not increase after treating the PTs with GLA and zinc nitrate. Would the results refute or support this prediction? Okay, so that's what this is. This is just one of some of these are just annoying because it's a lot of like flip flop craziness. So we know that the student thinks that it will not increase. So we're saying which experiment, one or two, would support it or would not support it. So you might think, well, if one supported it, then the other wouldn't. Not necessarily. Let's look at these graphs. So it's it's talking about GLA and zinc nitrate. Well, if you look, I did I forget to put... The, oh, there's nothing about information about experiment one. But there was not zinc... There was not both for figure one. So bye-bye. It, it, that's... You only do both once you get to experiment two. So experiment one doesn't even have to do with it. So bye-bye, Xing that out. We do not care. We're not doing that. Okay. So in that case, we're looking down here. What happens? It's going up. It's increasing. So we know that it's supporting it. Or it's, it's not supporting it. That's, that's exactly what they want you to think, that it does support it. it. The student said it doesn't increase, so it actually refutes it. I'm sorry. That's why I hate these, because they could easily say increase, but, you know, they have to make things all backwards and mixed up. But that's what I'm talking about. These are the hardest ACT questions. If you can get ones like this, then you should be fine. Now, something I did not mention, I did not... Most of these are difficult questions, but questions could be even harder than this if you just simply don't know about the information like especially for math so i would recommend studying your algebra your geometry um a good tip is maybe if you have contact information for either of your teachers your geometry or algebra maybe ask for a final exam review that maybe they're using for their students now or if you still have one from when you had that teacher but you know what else you can do Oh yeah, I have full courses on this. So look up Jacob Nash Geometry Lessons. It's on a different channel. Or Jacob Nash Algebra Lessons. That's also on an even different channel. Now I have everything on the same channel, but I used to not. And I have a, a topic reviews about everything. And if you'll notice, there's a little bit something different about my voice in those. So sorry about that, especially the geometry ones. But if you need that, then it's there. So I hope this helped. Thank you for watching and good.